when you talk about dairy management, it's all about the aspects of keeping the dairy animal so that they become productive. In dairy management, we have one which is called feeding management. We have housing management. We have breeding management. But if you allow your animal to graze throughout the day, you are very sure productivity will be very low. You cannot formulate all the feed and say this is for dairy animals. We have dry animals. We have lactating. We have pregnant. We have calves. And all of them, they have their own feeds. And the importance when you are doing these records is for evaluation. Are we making a profit or a loss? Dairy farming is a good enterprise. It's easy to start. It's all about the interest. I'm Aruse Magdalene from Eldore Technical Training Institute. You're watching Emerging Business. Thank you so much. I'm Aruse Magdalene from Eldore Technical Training Institute. Uh, I'm a tutor. I teach animal production and extension services. When you talk about dairy management, it's all about the aspects of keeping the dairy animal so that they become productive. And in dairy management, we have one which is called feeding management. We have housing management. We have breeding management, among others. When you talk about the feeding management, we ensure that we feed our animals using what you call TMR, total mixed rations, so that these our animals will become productive. And when I talk about total mixed rations, it's all about the five feed components. That's carbohydrates, the minerals, the vitamins, the protein, the ravages, and the carbohydrates. So once you plus water, once you feed your animals using all those feeds, we are very sure your animals will become productive and when it comes to this feeding management before you feed your animals make sure you consider what you call the body weight and the amount of feed you're supposed to give your animal in a day is three percent of its body weight so you're going to take your weighing ban you measure the weight of the animal so that you know how much of the feed am i going to give this animal if it is protein carbohydrates like take an example your animal is weighing 200 kilograms 3% of 206 kilograms. So, so that animal should eat 3 kilograms in a day. So 6 kilograms, meaning that in the morning, there is a proportion you are supposed to give mid-morning and in the evening. As you feed this animal, ensure that you have what you call a, a feeding intervals. Allow this animal to feed, to rest, for it to regurgitate, for its, the feeds to be used in the body for production of the uh, what we need, that is milk. That's what you call the feeding intervals. But if you allow your animal to graze throughout the day, you are very sure productivity will be very low. We have health management. When you talk about the health management, you're looking at the health aspect of an animal, the well, well-beingness of the animal. And that is all about the diseases. Do you vaccinate your animals? Do you ensure that the area your animal is is clean? Because if an animal is affected by diseases, eventually that animal will be having a lot of stresses which affect productivity come to housing management. As you can see, we have various structures of our dairy animals and we have group based on various groups. So when it comes to housing management, we usually ensure that we house our animals so that when there is too much sunshine, they are not getting stressed. Too much rainfall, no stress. Then we have what we call the breeding management. So in the aspect of the breeding management, we usually ensure that we select the best breeds which are uh, suitable for production, for, for productivity of the milk. Like, if I want high milk productivity, I usually ensure that I select the best bull that give me high production of the milk. When it comes to breeding management, again, I usually look at what you call the methods of breeding. Like one, we have the use of AI, we have the use of embryo transfer, we have the use of natural method, like I select the best bull. Yeah, and you, as, as you deal with this thing known as breeding management, first of all, look which trait am I going to improve in my dairy animal. Is it the size of the udder? Is it the body size of that dairy animal? You see? Yeah, exactly, we have various breeds of our animals. Like one, we have Frisian. If you want to determine a Frisian, it is usually black and white in color, having white socks, white forehead, yeah, and black patches. And then we have what you call the Jersey, we have the Gansies, we have, uh, we have the Frisian, among others. Those are the breeds that we have.
the first thing is what you call the productivity of an animal. Like if of the, for the frisian, uh, you're going to look how much of the milk is going to produce. Like frisian usually give us around 40 liters in a day. Darcy, I give us 35 liters in a day and Gansi. After that productivity of animal, it's all about what you call the farmer's preferences and choices. So what the farmer likes is, the, is what he or she is going to adopt. And the other thing is what you call the adaptation in terms of climatic condition. A good example is an animal like a frisian. A frisian, you cannot take it in arid and semi-arid areas. It will not survive because of extreme weather conditions. Again, frisian is uh, more susceptible to diseases. So frisian, you cannot take it in an area where there is that prevalence of diseases. But again, maybe the area you are keeping that frisian is not in good condition. In terms of environmental, if it is very dirty, it is more susceptible to diseases. So it depends on how that farmer is going to to take care about the animal. It depends again on what you call the skills. Frisian requires a lot of skills, yeah, and the knowledge. So if you don't have the knowledge and the skills based on dairy, something like a frisian will be much difficult for you to handle. But something like uh, Jassy and the Gansies, at least they are, are well adapted to the environment and they are not, they do not require a lot of skills, yeah. Yeah, when you talk about the amount of feed given to an animal in a day, I say 3% of its body weight. Like this one of an animal is weighing around 600 kilograms. So I've said you take your wing band, the wing band is having the calibration of the height fast as the kilograms. So if I, if I just measure the weight of an animal from the grit of an animal, this is where it passes. So if you measure that weight of an animal, 600 kilograms, 3% is 18 kilograms. So that 18 kilograms, I'm supposed to partition in three times in a day. And usually say that you better give your animal what you call the ravages or the bulky feeds in the morning because you understand the stomach of an animal, it has four stomach compartments. That's rumen, reticulum, omasum, abomasum. And under the rumen, you have what you call a rumen microbes. The small, small microbes that help in digestion. So you're supposed to give the bulky feeds to help them digest then you give what you call the tmr those carbohydrates the vitamins thereafter you can give what you call the ravages again that will help in digestion uh the best feed the farmers should consider actually is what you call the best feeds that is having high nutritive value like most of our farmers like giving our animals the napier grass but the stage of harvesting the napier grass is the determining factor some of them harvest when they are one month old, which is very difficult for our animals to attain the nutritive value at the end of the day. So the correct stage of harvesting them will determine the nutritive value the animal requires. But again, I can encourage the farmers to plant something like bracharia grass, which is having high protein percentage in a day. We have the asola, which is having again high protein in a day. So if you give your animal those kind of the feeds that is having high protein content, at the end of the day, the animal will have attained the protein required in a day. But take an example, something like an apia grass. It is having 7% to 14% protein and the animal requires 18%. Where am I going to get the remaining balance of the protein? I'm going to chip in into my pocket so that I can buy the protein to supplement the remaining. So I encourage the farmers to plant something that give them high protein content. And equivalent to that, again, when you talk about these animals, you usually look at the market. If the market is just uh, weighing the milk in terms of kilograms, I'm supposed to give a breed like a jersey and the ganses because they have high butterfat content. But if the market, they are just aiming at what you call the quantities, I'm going to give a frisian because it gives me large amount of milk per day. Exactly, when we talk about underperforming, like a frisian, we are supposed, it's supposed to give us like 40 liters of milk per day. Jassy Gans is 35 liters of milk per day. So if that animal will not attain the required amount of milk per day, or during that lactation, lactation is the period between the time the animals calve down up to the time it dries. So if it will not give us that amount of milk in that period, we usually say lactation, it will give us 1800 kilograms from day one up to the time it dry off. So if, if I calculate and it will not attain that, I'm supposed to cull that animal because it uses more of 
my uh, income on terms of buying the feeds and the yet I'm not getting anything. When you talk about the storage management of the feed, we can store them in terms of what you call the silage. Like you have seen, we have some of our feeds here in the farm. These are the ready. We can take these maize, we chop them into the required sizes, then we ensilage them for future use, you see. We have what you call the use of hay. The use of hay, maybe you have herbage or too much of grasses in your farm, cut them down, allow them to wilt, then you bale them for future use, you see. And we have something else known as standing grasses. A standing grass is a grass that is not used by animals, it is not stumbled by the animals. So those are three ways in which you can conserve the feeds, in form of hay, form of silage and in form of standing forage. Exactly, we have one of the feed uh, related diseases like a bloat. A bloat is accumulation of grasses in the rumen, and that one is caused by one. We have what you call the lushy pastures. If you cut your pastures, like at the moment we have a rainy season, if you just cut your pastures and give your animal the way it is, they'll bloat. Yeah. So what you're supposed to do, ensure that you, if you cut the pastures, will them before you give your animals. So the pastures you cut today, you will them, you feed them tomorrow. Another thing that causes the bloat is what you call them um, obstruction of the oesophagus by maybe something like a seed. That one again will cause what you call the bloat. We have another thing, another disease known as lactic acidiosis, and that one is caused by grain overload. Sometimes us as farmers, do, sometimes you change the feed from grasses to grains abruptly you see that one will cause what you call a disorder which is not recommended to not be abrupt okay when the animal gives birth the first thing is that you are supposed to be there to help that animal and even before it gives birth we have some of the things that known as steaming up when this animal is pregnant you have to steam up by ensuring that you increase the nutritive value more so the energy feeds like the carbohydrates so that when this animal calves down the the the, the, the calf is healthy the mother has what you call, or the dam has the, uh, the body reserve. You understand that when an animal calves down, it doesn't feed. And how will it survive? It will survive because it is using what you call the body reserve. So immediately when this animal calves down, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to ensure that the management are up to date. That's feeding management. Actually, it depends on what you call the lifespan of the feed. Like if you are dealing with what you call the dairy meal, it has what you call the expiry date. For the something like the silage that I've said in terms of feed storage, it doesn't have the lifespan so long as it is under good storage. It is under good storage. If it is a hay, if you are storing in a good store that is not, there is no rain that falls on it or water that can cause what you call aflatoxins. Yeah. So as far as the storage is okay, the feed can go for a very longer time. Like our, our scenario in the school farm, we still have the silage for last term and we are still yet going to feed our animals. So I usually encourage the farmers actually uh, to ensure that they formulate their own feeds. That's to reduce the cost and maximize the profit. If you go and just buy the direct formulated feed, it is more expensive. But if I just go and buy the, the feeds, uh, the feed components, I buy the protein like soya bean, I buy the grains, I buy the wheat, and then I formulate by myself. It is more cheaper compared to buying the well-formulated feeds. It is not that much technical, actually. It's all about the knowledge. A farmer, first of all, should have the knowledge. Say so that when it, it comes to formulation of the feed, he knows what he or she requires to formulate, in which ratio, and for which classes of animals. You cannot formulate all the feed and say this is for dairy animals. We have dry animals, we have lactating, we have pregnant, we have calves, and all of them, they have their own feeds. So first of all is the background knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. 
So when it comes to the heel health of the animals, you have two things that you're supposed to look at. One is what you call physical alliteration, and that's what you can see in your eyes. And one is what you call the dunk or the feces. If it is watery or hard, that animal is sick. If again, you're supposed to look at what you call the color of the urine. Is it a bloody urine? Is it a yellow urine? The normal urine should be pale yellow. Another thing is what you call the skin coat of an animal. It should be really smooth and shiny. You're supposed again to look at the membranes of the eyes. Are they the pale red or the red? Yeah. Another thing that you're supposed to look is what you call the physiological alliteration that affect the internal part of the animal. And one is what you call the temperature. Is it high or low? You're supposed to look at the pulse rate. Is it high or low? And the other thing is what you call lack of appetite. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to the deworming of animals, we are deworming these animals because they are being affected by the internal parasites. And you know, generally the parasites usually affect the productivity of animals. It causes other diseases. It makes the animal to become dull, among others. So as it comes to this thing known as deworming, usually deworm depending on the intervals and where the animal is grazing. If this animal is found in the marshy areas, we usually say that deworm after every one month. But if the animal is found in the areas with is not mushy you do have after a period of three months and again when it comes to the dewormers you have what you call the levamisol dewormers and you have what you call the uh, the albendazol dewormers the levamisol is the one that remove everything but albendazol is the one that kills so you look which kind of the dewormer are you going to use and again look at the cost and the elements that it contains and when it comes to spraying of the animals, again, usually spray the animals to control the external parasites. Those are the ticks, the lice, the mites, among others. So as you spray your animals again, look at the concentration of the spray, the, the, the acaricide. So concentration means that sometimes you are given, use 20 mils in 40 mils of water. You're supposed to do that way. Because if you give more of it, some of our farmers like ignoring, they usually take 20 mils and 10 liters of water. That will affect the skin coat of our animal because the concentration is very high. And again, as you do this thing known as spray, make sure you change your acaricide. Don't use one acaricide like for a very long period of time. Be changing that acaricide. Because if you use that acaricide for a very longer period of time, your animals or the ticks in the animal will develop resistance. Even if you spray, they'll not die. So it's good to change. Our frequency of deworming, I've said, uh, deworming, it depends on where you come from. If it is a marshy area after one month, spraying, it depends, but we usually say that at least once in a week. When you talk about the proper hoof care, we usually ensure that the hooves of animals are short for ease of movement and to control what you call the diseases, and even to avoid injuring themselves so usually ensure that we use the hoof trimmer to cut the hoofs and when you talk about the proper hoof care we usually ensure that the housing is always clean to avoid what you call the foot rot So when you talk about the dry animal, the dry animal is the animal that is not pregnant, it is not uh, uh, producing the milk. So when it comes to this dry animal, we have certain kind of the feeds that you are supposed to use in feeding them. You are not supposed to use a dairy meal to feed a dry animal. At the end of it all, it will not produce the milk. So what you are saying is that increase what you call the nutritive feeds, give them what you call the balanced diet, and more so the bulky feeds or the energy feeds. So as you feed this animal, there is a place almost this animal coming on heat yeah if this animal had had, uh, had dry for like two months on the third month you're supposed to do something known as flushing and flushing is increasing the nutritive feeds prior to onset of heat so you increase the protein feed so that this animal will come on heat it increases what you call the twinning rate it's also ensure that they overproduce are more so if you do that flushing your animals of course will, will will succeed or to come on heat. Eventually when this animal come on heat, you serve the animal. And when you have served this animal, you're supposed again to ensure that is the pregnancy there, yeah? By ensuring that you do what you call the pregnancy diagnosis. So in pregnancy diagnosis, you have what you call the rectal palpation. We have what you call the use of ultra machine. And again, observing the signs 
and urinary progesterone. I can take the urine to the lab and test if this animal is pregnant. After I've done this, all this, what I'm supposed to do is to manage this pregnant animal. So in managing the pregnant animal, ensure again, you reduce the amount of feed eaten by that animal. Yeah. And another thing, again, you are supposed to ensure that you give what you call the dry cow salt. In giving the dry cow salt, it will help this animal not to have what you call the uh, calving problems or retain placenta. Another thing, you have what you call the milk fever, among others. So you give the dry cow salt and then you steam up the cow calf down. It reaches that period of lactation. Okay, when it comes to records, uh, we have various types of records in the dairy section. We have the feeding records, we have the breeding records, we have the health records, we have the financial records among others. So when it comes to these records, in terms of keeping them, we can keep them in terms of hard copies that should be updated daily. We can keep them in softwares, like the use of computers, so you can keep so that you can be updating daily. And the importance when you are doing these records is for evaluation. Are we making a profit or a loss? If this animal, uh, again, is for future reverence, like breeding records, maybe I serve my animal today and the father or what you call the sire is James and the mother is Dorcas. So when it comes to next time, I'm not supposed to do what you call in breeding. So the record is the one to give me that clear information who is the father and the mother, the sire and the dam of this. So that is important of records. When it comes to feeding records again, you're supposed to be evaluating which kinds of the feed am I supposed to give to the dry cow, lactating cows, in which ratios. Yeah. Productivity records and the sales record. How much of the milk am I supposed to sell in a day or how much of the milk this cow is producing in a day? At the end of that lactation period, from the time it calves down up to the time it dries, is it 1800 liters and above or it is lower? If it is lower, you're supposed to remove that animal from the breeding stock because it's just consuming the feed, it's not productive. Yeah. Okay, my advice to someone who is watching me right now. Dairy farming is a good enterprise. It's easy to start. It's all about the interest. So if you want to know more about the dairy farming, welcome you to Eldore Technical Training Institute. Here we can equip you with the full knowledge at only 500 shilling per session. My quick advice to a farmer who needs to start uh, this uh, dairy farming. If you're having one cow, it's very easy to manage. It's all about the interest, yeah? So if you're having that one dairy cow, just formulate your feeds. Ensure that the, where your animal it says is a very good environment. You ensure that the freedom of animals are well kept. Like it's free from thirst, free from pain and injury, free from diseases. So after you have considered all those things, of course the animal will become productive, yeah? Mapema and your best. Be sure, make a sure decision for a sure future. Eldore Technical Training Institute, ETTI, offers students an opportunity to explore their career dreams and make informed choices towards their career growth. Intakes is ongoing in the following higher diploma, diploma, certificate and artisan programs, building and civil engineering, agriculture and animal health, travel tourism and hospitality management, information communication technology, medical and health sciences, journalism and mass communication. Make a sure decision with Eldoret Technical Training Institute. Apply now. SMS your name, course, grade and email address to 0725-818-644 or visit our website www.eldorettti.ac.ke. Eldoret Technical Training Institute. Growing Reputation. Mm-hmm.